hi everyone i hope you're doing okay this is another video from me beyond astro k and i just want to talk about mercury retrograde because i completely forgot about doing this video you know mercury retrograde it actually went it actually was like less than two weeks ago it went into retrograde into aquarius and you know because it's in we are in aquarius season so obviously it's very fitting to do this now so you know because it's in aquarius we've had this sort of story from last year and there was a lot of planets that was in aquarius even like when i did like tarot readings um a lot of a lot of the readings energies for me personally and i think for some people as well that there's a lot of like retrograde energies happening and whenever Mercury is retrograde into a sign, I mean, sorry, whenever Mercury is retrograde, it's, especially the tarot cards, a lot of the tarot cards were reversed. So that made me see that there was going to be lots of like delays happening. Now I'm going to pull out some cards for the general energies for this mercury retrograde and this is going to just be like a collective reading like a general collective worldly reading for everyone all signs all genders all people or you know so it's going to just be for everyone but obviously check where aquarius is in your charts because that's where it's going to be playing a huge life force like a huge life change with Mercury in Aquarius, retrograde in Aquarius, you know, some of the similar themes from last year could be coming up now. But also, you know, it's, it's, I, I personally, I feel it's like seeing what happened last year and seeing what themes that came up and see what you've learned, see what you've gained and see how far you've come. Whenever Mercury is retrograde, it is about slowing down. It's about slowing down of the mind, body and soul. Slowing down what you're doing, slowing down what you're thinking and also slowing down in a general sphere. With this Mercury retrograde, because it's going to go, it's, it's, it is in Aquarius, but then it's going to go into Capricorn. But we're, obviously we're going to focus on Aquarius. It is... A, it does feel a bit like a weird one because with the general theme of Aquarius you've got to look at you know it's about looking back to the past which you know ideology wise Aquarius can find quite hard because it does always look to the future and or you know the general of Aquarius is about the future because it's ruled by Uranus but still it is fixed and when you're fixed, because all the fixed signs are fixed in different ways, like Aquarius is fixed in the mind, fixed on an, an idea or ideology. A Taurus is very fixed in its ways and how to earn money. Leo is fixed in its ways in terms of creativity, performance and having fun. And Scorpio is very fixed when it comes to, you know, joint finances, but also when it comes to like passions and also transformation. But with this one happening, it's about looking back on your friends, looking back on your groups and associations, looking back on your goals, looking back on what you wanted to learn and teach, who you surround yourself with. And also looking, you know, because we could find out some like crazy secrets that are happening now. And, you know, if you look in your personal house chart, we're curious what house it rules. You're going to see lots of these themes coming up. And also it depends on, you know, whether it's, you know, wherever it is in your sign as well. It's a general for, you know, Aquarius is in the first house. It's about looking at the self, the body, the physical body, the future. Looking at how the mindset is. And... You know, when it's in Aries, for it's about looking at the friends. So Aries will feel this whole Aquarian energy. And like with Pisces, it's about looking at, you know, it's about resting, really resting, going within, slowing down. So it's going to be a time of 
you know, really slowing down on what you are doing and, you know, rethinking and thinking about stuff that actually comes up and how you can actually deal with it. So those are like the themes that are going to come up. Okay, so what I am going to do now, I've, put, I've pulled out some general oracle cards and I've also pulled out some tarot cards. Okay, so let's do this. So the first oracle card that we have for this is the awakening. There's going to be a, a huge, like the general energies is definitely, we're going to be awakening to like a subconscious within us. And the awakening can be shocking. It could be exciting. It could also be very in the middle as well. But we're going to be awakening to our thoughts because this is here. So our thoughts, we're going to be, you know, some of the energies I'm getting from this card is there's going to be some major downloads that come. And we're going to be awakening to things that are in our lives, especially on, like, on the physical sphere as well. So awakening to what comes up is one of the major themes. The second card that I have is Guardian Angel. So... I feel especially, you know, if you're if you're if, if it's entering like a water house, it's gonna be, you know, it's, it's gonna be showing you that you are protected. You know, you are very protected. Anything that comes up because some of the themes that come up, remember this is Uranus energy, some of the themes that come up, it, we can actually feel that we're not understood, that we are being pressured in some way. And we're not protected, we're not under, you know, we're not, um, there's no way out in anything. With Some of us can actually feel quite lonely during this um, Mercury retrograde in Aquarius. But if you really look deeper, especially with the Awakening card, if you really look deep, you're going to know that you have guardian angels around you. Some of you could even get more psychic downloads during this Mercury retrograde. And it could be from people that have left this earth, or it could be people that just appear out of nowhere. Because, you know, Aquarius, they do, the general the general theme of Aquarius is, you know, just having conversations with different types of groups and people. And some of these people could actually be your guardian angel without you even realising it. Then the third card is we have is Union. So we'll be definitely seeking unions, seeking unions, or we could even be wanting to join a union. Yeah, that's what I'm getting as well. We could be seeking unions, getting closer, because, you know, when retrogrades happen, it is said that, you know, you shouldn't get back with anyone or anything. Personally, I think it's free will. It's just... You know, when things come back in our lives, it's not necessarily going to stay, but you just never know it could stay. So if you, you know, so union card is about being with someone. It could, you know, I feel that union could be getting back with an ex, seeking union with groups, seeking union, finding like your tribe as well. Or even if you're in, a, if you're coupled up, really get into like the, Mitty gritty if there's any like trouble or if there's any problems that actually come up and sometimes you can find yourself getting more closer together so union is going to be one of the themes that's going to be of importance to some of us too and if i pick a last card is the last card i pick is intuition yes now aquarius during this time, our intuition could actually be playing with us. We could actually be quite off. We're not, we're not, we're not, some of us are not going to feel as grounded. You know, it could be, we can have lots of flashes of intuition and flashes of brilliance. But then it's just like, was it real or was it not real? This energy of this retrograde is guiding us to listen to our intuition. Even though, even if it does feel like it's not really it's like quite crazy listen to our intuition 
because Mercury retrograde is about going back. So if you know, obviously, not to go to like the dark corner of if you're walking at night and your intuition saying just don't go there and you're thinking, no, just go there, listen to that voice. Or if you're writing something or if you're signing any contracts or anything, which 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 is which can be quite crazy during this time. But if you have to do it, you have to do it. But if there's things that need to be signed, something of importance, listen to your intuition. You know, it's all well and good, like us tarot readers or astrologers or spiritualists say, oh, don't do this and don't do that. Personally, I feel it, like I said, it's free will. And, you know, do what you feel. Your intuition is going to be very heightened. It's going to be extremely heightened during this retrograde. And now I've pulled out some other tarot cards that I will be showing you now, okay? So other messages for the collective, because those were like the general oracle messages. These are other messages that are actually coming through for this Mercury retrograde. The first card we have is the Empress card. I love this card. This card is, you know, the Empress card is that, as you guys know, is the Taurus card. It's Venus. And this is going to, this, this card is actually just showing us guys that we just have to really take care of ourselves during this time because it's not a time of being grounded in any shape or form. It's this, this is such a positive card for us to have, okay, for us generally, for us on the collective. And I feel that the Empress is also bringing out, it's going to be bringing out this like loving energy, loving quality. It's about us, it's, this card is about abundance. So even if you don't feel abundant during this retrograde time, we can do things that make us feel abundant. We could do things by ourselves or we can do things with like our partner, people that we love that can help us. And that I always say this. I love essential oils, I also love to bake, I also love to cook, I like to watch TV, I like to be grounded, so if you are going to work and when you come home and you don't, and you just feel, do something that makes you feel lovable, this card is about love, it's also about artistic pursuits as well, look at things that you you know, because wherever it is in your chart, it's going to be also guiding you to see what artistic pursuits that you love to do. Some of us will be going back or things that we're going back to that we used to do in the past. If it's like if it hits like your fifth house, for instance, this is great to be going back to artistic pursuits. If it's, you know, this card is also about health and wellness. If it's in your sixth house, this is going to be playing a huge part as well. And also this is about fertility, it's also about children, you know, creativity. So all of these themes could really come up during this Mercury retrograde. Some of you may even discover something shocking as well, but it's going to be, it feels like it's going to be a nice, it feels like it's going to be really nice what's going to be coming up during this Mercury retrograde. And, you know, this is, this card is about the heart, as you guys can see. This is the heart. The heart is going to be very, you know, the heart is going to be beating harder as well. The card is asking, what do you love? You know, we have North Node in Taurus, which is playing out for the next 18 months. Even though, even though it doesn't touch this Mercury retrograde, this is still going to be at the forefront of what we're about during this time. And, you know, another thing I wanted to add with this Empress card, even though it's going to feel very uncomfortable for a lot of us to slow down and really connect to our heart and our, our pursuits of wellness and taking care of ourselves and taking care of others, you know, we're going to be learning so much. You know, we can also feel, you know, like I said, this card is about abundance. It's like Mother Earth. So other things that we can do during this time. On especially especially on the because this card I feel definitely represents our emotional state during this Mercury retrograde. Connecting to to Mother Earth will help us just to like get rid of those crazy thoughts, these crazy ideas, crazy things that we're gonna be wanting to come up with and wanting to do. Because this card is asking us just to slow down. So the next card that I have. 
good. Especially when it comes to like our money situation. We have the six of pentacles. So with these two cards together. Well the six of pentacles is a lovely card for this. Because we some of us could actually find that we're going to get a bit more comfortable when it comes to our finances. Now what do I mean by comfortable? For me I feel that. You know, talking about money can feel quite uncomfortable. Talking about your earnings, talking about how much you want to earn, talking about, you know, setting goals, setting goals in how you want to save money, how you want to spend your money. I feel these themes can definitely come up for a lot of us. I also feel that there's going to be more of like a contentment when it comes to money. So the six of, we are in a six of pentacles year as well because we're in a lover's year which is the six of pentacles so it's about giving but it's also about sharing as well so i feel we're going to look at money and our finances in a different way and so we should because we are in a different time you know 20 years ago you could say oh this and this and this and money this time i'm going to flash it you know lots of flashiness when it comes to money but now it's me looking at it and thinking okay how can i help people how can I, you know, save but help people? How could I give to the poor? How can I, my mind just went give to the rich. I think they already have enough. But there may be more of a, how can I give to others? You know, especially if I have, how can I give? You know, there might be more of a flow, especially come from emperors, more of a flow of abundance. And also not being afraid to spoil ourselves as well. Not thinking, oh, I have to, you know, there's things I need to buy during this time. You know, instead of, instead of just going out there and just buying it, it's just like thinking before you buy and not rushing. You know, this card also comes up during this time is, you know, are we overspending in any way? And if you are, what are you going to do about it? You know, some, it's about looking at what you have and not trying to be greedy and want more because we're all greedy in our own way. But really stopping and thinking, okay, do I actually need this? Do I actually want this now? So there's going to be a bit of a pause when it comes to like our money situation, but also thinking about how we're spending. Then we have the next card. Ooh. I feel this is more for like the mindset, justice card. Definitely, I feel definitely for the mindset. There's going to, you know, during this time, because the Justice card is about balance, the Libra card. And it's funny I put it there because it is, you know, it's a, it's a Venus card. So I feel like in terms of like conversations, especially like our mindset, there's going to be more of a balance. We're going to be listening to others. We're not going to be, not gonna, but... The energies I'm picking up is like listening to others, listen to others' point of view. If there are any like disagreements or arguments during the retrograde, which I believe can happen because, you know, there's going to be lots of miscommunication. It's about coming to a, a consensus of, you know, sitting down, trying to work things through in an adult way, which may not always be easy. Because whenever Mercury retrograde gets involved... And also our um, our minds, our hearts, our emotions are very heightened. It's very, it's not easy to, you know, okay, let's just sit this out. So I feel things will become a little bit more clearer. Yes, there will still be some odd disagreements and some miscommunications that happens all the time. But, you know, and also this card also reminds me of if you're signing anything as well. If you really need to, obviously reread or get someone who is in a position of power, i.e. like a bank manager, a lawyer. So this card also represents the law. And we can also, you know, during this time, I feel that there can be some themes that come up about this as well. There could be changes that happen. And also I feel that there could be some changes that happen within the workspace as well, about there might be new implementations um new, new new things that you have to sign new things that come up with in terms of like agreements in some way don't be surprised if that actually comes up 
but it's going to be fair it's not going to be oh this is what you're going to get this is what i get it's going to be of balance and also what's just come up as well guys i know it sounds really random was that the pluto in Lib libra generation and this is a libra card so i feel that that might be you know i feel that some people from the pluto in libra generation might be implementing these types of um these laws as well the next card that we have i feel is very much an emotional time we got the hangman the hangman i feel during this mercury retrograde is they can obviously be because the hangman is about you know letting go there could be some confusion along the way as well but i also feel for this card that because whenever you see the hack it's neptune okay so this i feel that this some of us may not want to be as and it's not bad I feel that some of us may not be as feeling as ambitious during this Mercury retrograde. There could be a stagnation going on. But and I feel I say stagnation, like just not wanting to do anything, not being motivated. You know, I feel this is very much an emotional time for some of us. And you know, I'm not a doctor or anything, but it can make us feel very like emotional, stagnated. It almost can feel like a huge cloud around us. Like we, you know, it, in terms of I want to go somewhere, but I cannot be bothered. Or I want to go somewhere, but things are just really up in the air. So that's it. I'm just not going to do anything. But it is time that, you know, this card is Neptune. So Neptune is about meditation. It's about solitude as well. This card is also represents being in between worlds as well. So we could be thinking of the future, but also thinking of the past, or we could be very stuck in the now. So when we do have this time alone of deep meditation, of deep solitude, of thinking about whatever we're thinking about, it's a, it's, it's, it's a time of transformation, guys. We're going to be finding that we're going to have a lot of self-knowledge within us. And I'm also picking up, it can actually be very much a hurtful time as well. Very much a hurtful time. And the hurtfulness could be because things are coming up that we've actually really pulled down. And we know and we don't want to feel it, but it's actually coming up. So... It's a you know this card is also showing that it's about having a lot of time to ourselves because there's so many things going on and obviously it does depend on where it is in your chart but there's so many things and, and themes going on so solitude is going to be one of the key things that some of us are going to be wanting to do during this mercury retrograde and what you do in solitude is going to be important to you too you know you could be self cancelling yourself you could get more, you know, feeling more empathetic because it's not going to be a time of empathy and sensitivity, depending. So having that time to yourself to think about things, whatever comes up, is one of the major themes I feel that's going to be happening. And then we've got two more cards. Oh. Again, we have, this is a money card, the three of pentacles. For me, this card was, this card actually represents that things could, during this time, even though we've had a pen, six of pentacles card, this feels like there can be things that actually spin out of control. Yeah, they feel that like things could actually be spinning out of control and it feels like things are... It's been out of control, not in a mad way, but just in a way that things are not thought about. Things are, because, you know, the, num the number three is about, you know, in a way, creativity. It's about communication as well. So that's one of the things that I'm picking up. There's things that are coming, spinning out of control. And I, and I feel that it's definitely in terms of communication. 
And this could be in terms of communication when it comes to like money, talking about money, talking about stuff in general, you know. So if it feels like that for you, it's about, if it feels like for some of you that things are really spinning out of control, it's about thinking before you speak, basically. And also, the Three of Pentacles is also saying to me that you have to be very, you know, the, the, there's, there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of need and focusing on our energies that come up now. Because it feels like things can stay and things can just leave very quickly. And that's why things can feel like it's spinning out of control. It feels very weird, this energy as well. But also there's a, there's a, there also feels like a time of lots of like talk, but also no action as well. Lots of promises, but there's no action. So that's why it's very important during this time to really think before we speak, because we may have, we don't want to go back on our word. We don't want to promise more than we should. Okay. So yes, thinking before we speak. And the last card that we have for this Mercury retrograde the last like energies that we can learn from is the death card yeah so this is gonna this is gonna feel very uncomfortable for some also the, we just had the empress card which is north node and we also the death card which is a south node in scorpio so we're going to be obviously very transformed very transformed there could be some fiery, as you can see, there's lots of fire, a lot of fiery energy. Whenever we see the death card, it is a card of deep transformation. It's about letting go of old things that we're holding on to, old emotions, old thoughts. It could be in a relationship. We are definitely be transformed after this Mercury retrograde. There are things that are going to leave our lives that we're not going to be happy about for some of us. There are things that will leave our lives that some of us will be very grateful for. Know that this, you know, this card is also a guiding card of communication. Things that we, that we, that are supposed to come to us will come. Things that are not supposed to be in our lives will leave. And some of this will leave by our own actions or by actions that are in the universe. Because remember, we are in a different time now. You know, the eclipses, are, the eclipses are coming. We're also in the North Node. So we are still working with what we physically and emotionally need and what we physically and emotionally don't need. And this is, this is also a time of mourning. This is also a time that we're going to mourn what, what, my mind just goes black, what was once, if that makes sense. Because Mercury retrograde is about the past. And Scorpios, this is a Scorpio card, it likes the past in a way. It likes the past in a way to dredge up old feelings, emotions, intensity that it can work through. And hopefully if you work on the higher side to it, you can transform. But if you work on the lower side, it's about getting people back. It's about manipulation. It's about control. This card also is saying is that... A bit like the justice card. It's also saying that, you know, things will be revealed about ourselves, about our shadow selves. But on the general level, we can see that things are going to be very much revealed. And this could leave a great big shock to a lot of us. There are things, and it could be concerning money. It could be concerning um, something to do with our relationship, something within our job. Something deeper, obviously personal within ourselves. And how we deal with it is going to be another story, you know, because this is a Scorpio card, which is a Pluto card as well. Obviously, the, the judgment card is Pluto, but this is also Pluto. So this is a time that things are going to be dredged up and it's going to be slow burn. And once it does be slow burn, that's when there's going to be lots of, you know, fire, explosions, shocks. Some, some of it could be also excitement as well. So the last, the major, the last theme of this Mercury retrograde is the death card. There's going to be a lot of release. And there's going to be a lot of, you know, deep transformation. And it's not to say the transformation is going to be easy because none of it is easy, guys. 
none of it is easy but in order for us to get to that next level it's about change and sometimes when things need to change things it needs to be it needs to be quite slow it needs to be it can actually feel like it can actually feel so intense so deep and so dark and we may not even know where this is coming from but once we are transformed into that phoenix it's like even though i'm still hurting i'm glad i came for it you know it's like the seven stages of grief and during this time a lot of us may feel that we're going through that grief that seven stages of grieving but transformation is going to be key at the end okay so guys, that was a Mercury retrograde tarot for, you know, the collective. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And also check out my links below for any other information. Thank you, thank you very much guys for listening. I hope this Mercury retrograde reading has served you well. Feel free to let me know how it's gone for you. And I will speak to you soon. Take care. Bye. Thank you.